Hi friends, it's Miss Dancliff here, coming back on to do our second water cycle experiment. If you watched my first video and you conducted that experiment, you know it was on evaporation. So you were testing to see how long it took for the water in your cup to evaporate into water vapor. So I hope you had a chance to do that and check your predictions. So let's think back. After evaporation, when the water vapor is warm and it's rising into the sky and it meets cold air up in the sky, what happens? What is the second stage of the water cycle? I hope you were thinking of condensation. I know that's a really big word, but remember when that water vapor is hot and it rises and meets the cold air in the sky, it forms a cloud and cloud starts with the letter C and condensation starts with the letter C. So that's a way to help you remember. So this experiment is going to be showing condensation, that second stage in the water cycle, and we're gonna make a cloud in a cup. So before you get started on this experiment, I want to make sure you have permission from your parents and hopefully you can work with them on this because remember, we want you to keep your body safe and if you can think back to when we did this in class, I boiled water in a cup in the microwave and it got really hot and if you can remember, I melted that plastic cup because the water was so hot. So I want to make sure you're being safe, so make sure you get an adult to help you do this, okay? So the materials you're gonna need are a coffee mug or a hot cocoa mug to where you can microwave the water and, and make it hot in the microwave. And then you're gonna need a clear plastic cup because this is where we're going to make our cloud and you're going to see it, so it needs to be see-through. And then some ice, you can see that there. So that's all you're gonna need. So the first step is you're going to fill up your coffee mug with some water. Don't fill it all the way to the top, fill it in about the middle so it doesn't overflow. And you're gonna microwave it for about three to four minutes, but I want you to watch it and make sure it's not overflowing, but you start to see steam and it's starting to bubble up. That shows you that it's hot and that the water is boiling, okay? But also I want you to grab an oven mitt so that you can take it out of the microwave and not burn yourself and so that you're safe. So go ahead and fill up your mug, put it in the microwave for about three to four minutes, and make sure you're watching it to check on it and see if it's steaming and bubbling up, okay? All right, friends, I see my water is really boiling up now, so I have my oven mitt on to grab the mug out of the microwave because it's very, very hot. See the steam coming off of there? We know that water is hot. So go ahead and set that down on your counter. Let me back this up to show you here, okay? You can see it's steaming, so it's very hot. Now, so that's your hot water vapor. This is representing your water vapor rising in the sky. You're gonna put your plastic cup upside down over the mug. You can already see what's starting to happen, how that's changed. And put your ice on the top to represent that cold air that your water vapor is meeting in the sky. And then start to look of what's happening here. You can see that it's starting to be foggy and it's representing a cloud because that the heat is rising up and it's meeting that cold air in the sky to form a cloud. So you can see that cloud forming there just like it would in the sky in the water cycle. So you are all scientists doing this experiment, so I want you to jot down some notes and some observations that you're seeing throughout this experiment. What are you seeing at the top of the cup where the ice is? What are you seeing at the bottom of the cup where the heat is and then in the middle? So jot down some of your observations on a piece of paper or in a notebook because that is what scientists do to record what is happening in the experiment so others can repeat the same experiment and that they can learn from it and connect it to what's happening in the real world during the water cycle on Earth.